have another story highlighting the hypocrisy of the Democratic Party and the mainstream media. Now, I've been saying all along, I think this idea that Russian trolls buying $100,000 of Facebook ads. Oh, by the way, we found out they spent $4,700 on Google as well. Uh, somehow swung the 2016 election is absurd. Keep in mind that election, Open Secrets say it costs about $6.1 billion Hillary and Trump spent between the two of them. We're led to believe that $100,000 swung the election. I still contend that it's absurd. But we are told that the tactics that were used were incredibly shady and therefore that there needed to be, there were trolls that were charged by Mueller. There were congressional investigations. Democrats insisted that social media start, start censoring fake news. Uh, algorithms were changed on social media. This is used as an excuse to censor conservative viewpoints left and right. And we're told about how much of a big deal this was. So clearly, despite me not thinking it was a big deal, the Democrats and the mainstream media did think it was a big deal. So it might be shocking to you to hear that it turns out in the 2016 senatorial runoff race between uh, in, uh, Doug Jones, who was the Democrat, and Roy Moore, who was the Republican, there were a group of Democratic operatives who decided to mimic the tactics that the Russians used that they were so appalled by and actually do that to swing the 2016 election in the Arizona Senate race. The New York Times is going to report on this story, so I will happily read some of it to you, if you don't mind. As Russia's online election machinations came to light last year, a group of Democratic tech experts decided to try out similarly deceptive tactics in the fiercely contested Alabama Senate race, according to people familiar with the effort. The secret project carried out on Facebook and Twitter was likely too small to have an effect. Now keep that in mind. I want you to remember that. Let's see how much they spent because the New York Times, the same New York Times that told us how horrible and how brutal of a thing it was for Russia to spend these $100,000 on Facebook ads and how that could have helped swung an election. That same New York Times is saying, well, this effort was too small, so surely it only spent a couple hundred bucks, right? Anyways, we'll proceed. Uh, in which Democratic candidate was designed to help Doug Jones edged out the Republican Roy Moore. But it was a sign that the American political operatives of both parties have paid close attention to the Russian methods, which some fear may come to taint elections in the United States. One participant in the Alabama Project, Jonathan Morgan, is the chief executive of New Knowledge, a small cybersecurity firm that wrote a scathing account of Russia's experiments in 2016. An internal report in the Alabama effort obtained by the New York Times says explicitly that it experimented with many of the tactics now understood to have influenced the 2016 election. Oh, that's supposed to move. Give me one second. Let's slide down. I'm having trouble here. The project's operators created a Facebook page in which they posed as conservative Alabamians, using it to try to divide Republicans and even to endorse a write-in candidates to draw votes away from the Republican Mr. Moore. It involved a scheme to link the Moore campaign to thousands of Russians' accounts that suddenly began following the Republican candidate on Twitter, a development that drew media attention. Now, again, remember, we hear all the time, anything's trending that uh, is about the Democrats being bad or conservatives or Republicans being good, we're told, oh, it's Russian bots, it's Russian bots. As all the media said under here, all these Russians were backing Doug Moore, or uh, backing Roy Moore. Actually, now we're learning, actually, they weren't. It was actually Democratic operatives making it look like Russians were backing Republicans. Hmm, I wonder if they could have used those tactics elsewhere. But let's continue. We orchestrated an elaborate false flag operation that planted the idea that the Moore campaign was amplified on social media by Russian botnet, the report says. Mr. Morgan said in an interview that the Russian botnet ruse does not ring a bell. Oh, he doesn't remember that, even though their internal report does. Adding that others had worked on the effort and written the report. He said he saw the projects as a small experiment. In other words, not a big deal. He also said he could not account for the claims in the report. And again, this is the New York Times that the report, uh, this is the report the New York Times got that is specifically t from the people that did the uh, project saying what they did. The project sought to enrage and energize Democrats and depress turnout among Republicans, partly by emphasizing accusations that Mr. Moore had pursued teenage girls when he was a prosecutor in his 30s. So they're using these shady tactics to, one, claim that Russians are behind more and the Republicans. Hmm, that sounds familiar. That seems to have happened over and over. And second, to emphasize all these attacks about sexual allegations that Roy Moore pursued when he was in his 30s. Now, remember, we had all these reports about how Roy Moore was the sexual predator and how they had proof. Uh, there, there were yearbook signatures of his that proved that he was interested in all these young girls and all these crimes that he committed. And yet, strangely, as soon as the election was over, all of it went away. No one pursued any of these criminal charges. Here's a man who was an adult apparently trying to have sex with children or have relations with them, and yet it all went away after the election. Like, none of it mattered anymore. Isn't that strange? Oh, now we find out that this report was purposely making those accusations. 
Let us continue. The research project was intended to help us understand how these kind of campaigns operated since Mr. Morgan. We thought it was useful to work in context of a real election, but designed it to have almost no impact. In other words, oh, see, when the Russians did this, it was a horrible, terrible thing, but we were just mimicking it to see what kind of impact it had. But no, 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 trust us, it didn't influence the election. So let's get to the real deal, right? We know from the New York Times and the Democrats and the other mainstream media that Russian trolls spending $100,000 on Facebook was a horrible thing that could possibly have swung the 2016 presidential election. And we know that was $100,000 thereabouts out of an election that spent $6.1 billion. So let's see how much this you know, campaign that the New York Times and the people that did it said was too small to have any effect. Let's see how much they spent. The project had a budget of $100,000. Hmm, that sounds like a familiar number. And a race that cost $51 million, including the primaries, according to Federal Election Commission records. Now think about this. The Democrats and the mainstream media will have you believe that the Russians spending $100,000 on Facebook or thereabouts was enough to influence an election that it was over $6.1 billion spent. That was a horrible thing. But Almost the same amount, $100,000, in an election that only cost $51 million. Well, that's a pittance and too small to have any effect. Do you see the insanity here? The hypocrisy. It is absolutely staggering the nerve. They, how can the New York Times, I read it to you above how they're saying, oh, it was likely too small to have an impact on it. How could you say that with a straight face after all the reporting they did about these horrible Russians? Now, remember the reaction the Democrats had when we found out that Russian trolls bought Facebook ads, spent like $100,000 on it. They had investigations where Facebook officials had to come on. Mueller charged Russian trolls with trying to influence the election using these shady, deceptive tactics. It wasn't just that they were Russian. It was the terrible tactics that they used. It was lies. It was fake news that shouldn't be allowed to be spread. And algorithms were changed on Facebook and other social media that ended up being an excuse to censor conservative voices. But it was all in the name of getting rid of fake news because fake news is so horrible, it's so damaging. And then Democrats do the exact same thing. While they're on Capitol Hill arguing how you need to change all of this, they're doing the exact same thing in this Senate race. Except they're spending a far more greater proportion of the totality of what was spent in the election than the Russians ever did with the presidential election. And what I mean by that is, consider that both incidents were about $100,000 spent or thereabouts. Now, someone might nitpick and say, well, actually, the Russians spent a little more than that. But still, we're talking 100,000 out of 51 million, which I would still argue probably didn't have a massive effect, but still, that would clearly have a much larger effect than 100,000 out of 6.1 billion. Like, by a magnitude of greater than 10, it would have that much more of an effect. 100,000 out of 6.1 billion dollars. That effect would be so far less than 100,000 out of 51 million dollars. Yet the media and the Democrats, they act like this is no big deal and the Russia thing was a huge story. Let's go down and see who was involved in this. There's no evidence Mr. Jones, who was the Democratic candidate, was aware of this. Joe Trippi, a seasoned Democrat operative who served as a top advisor to the Jones campaign, said he noticed the Russian bot swarm settling more on Twitter. But he said it was impossible that the $100,000 had an impact on the race. Oh, geez, I wonder if that Democratic operative also said the same thing about Russian trolls on Facebook, only spending $100,000. I would bet not. I bet he was totally in favor of Democrats on Capitol Hill arguing that these Russians need to be charged and how shady and not ethical it was and how fake news swung the election. Here's who was involved. The money passed through American Engagement Technologies, run by Mikey Dickerson, the founding of the United States Digital Service, which was created during the Obama administration to try to upgrade federal government's use of technology. Sarah K. Hudson, a former Justice Department fellow, now with Investing in Us, a tech finance company partly funded by Mr. Hoffman, worked on the project along with Mr. Moore. Uh, let me go above it. It says this too. Despite its small size, the Alabama project brought together prominent names in the world of political technology. The funding came from Reed Hoffman, the billionaire co-founder of LinkedIn, who has sought to help Democrats catch up with Republicans in the use of online technology. Gee, some heavy hitters in the tech world, right? In the Democratic world, Democratic donors uh, using this. A close collaborator of Mr. Hoffman, Dimitri Mailhorn, the founder of Investing in Us, said in the statement that our purpose in investing in politics and civil engagements is to strengthen American democracy. And while they do not micromanage the projects they fund, they are not aware of having financed projects that have used deception. Mr. Dickinson declined to comment on this. Oh, they're just advocating democracy. They didn't think they were financing deception. This is absolutely insane. Uh, the nerve... And, Again, the hypocrisy and the double standards occurs over and over. Remember the other big scandal where we had Cambridge Analytica, who was this firm that went on and used a small portion of the data that Facebook had to try to target 
uh, election campaigns for the Republicans and Trump campaign. That was a huge deal. People need to go to jail for that. Oh my God, can you believe they would you misuse data like that? What a terrible thing. Way to steal an election. That's terrible. They, I believe it was The Guardian did a big story on this. People were, there's still fall off from that. People might go to jail. Yet in 2012, the exact same newspaper said that Barack Obama was a genius for doing the exact same thing. Except instead of going through Cambridge Analytical, he just went through Facebook itself. So instead of just having a small portion of the data that the Republicans got through Cambridge Analytic, Obama and the Democrats had all of the data because they were working with Facebook themselves. And again, so that far bigger scandal of Obama using all of the data of Facebook was considered a very shrewd move, a sign that the Democrats and Barack Obama was reaching out to the youth and using new technology to be able to get new voters. It was a good thing. It was genius. What a great campaign strategy. When the Republicans do a lesser version of it in 2016, it's a horrible crime. It proves shadiness. People need to go to jail. Now let's focus on this. When the Russians spend $100,000 out of $6.1 billion, oh my God, the tactics they used were so shady. People need to go to jail. We need to have congressional investigations. Social media needs to censor fake news. But when the Democrats spend $100,000 out of a far less, $51 million, thereby that $100,000 having a far bigger effect, ah, it was too small to have any effect, says the exact same people. Nothing to look at here. They're just trying to help democracy. It's just, it defies belief that these people could say this with a straight face. And yet, over and over, people will say, yeah, makes sense. Uh, it's right there for all to see. The New York Times, who reports on every day breathlessly about the Russian scandal to steal the election, now all of a sudden they're saying this. Uh, was, obviously, this was too small to have any real effect. And the other thing that's worth mentioning is, as I talked about before in this article, how remember back then there was all these, I remember it, talking to people online at different sites that were talking about how all oh, the Russians are behind all these Republicans. Look, Russian bots are behind Roy Moore. There were all these hashtags that would come up on Twitter over and over, like uh, about the WikiLeaks or uh, other things like that. And it was always, all oh, Russian bots are behind it. It's Russian bots. And there were all kinds of people, like I remember doing typing stuff up. It was like, well, wait a minute. Research shows that actually this is kind of a grassroots thing. These things are trending number one on Twitter. No, no, no. It was all Russian bots. Russian bots were behind all these Republicans and all these hashtags that were against Democrats. Now we find out that this was a strategy of Democrats that were pretending Russian bots were behind things, were intentionally deceiving people, using very similar tactics that the Russians themselves used. So two things. Remember, when you hear the Democrats talking about Russian influence, uh, they're hypocrites, they're liars. They use the exact same tactics and they don't feel that there's a problem whatsoever. So the entire Russia investigation nonsense is exactly that, a scam. It's just a sham because they, they're just upset. Even if that is true that the Russians did that, they're just upset that they beat them to the punch. So now the Democrats are using those same tactics, except even more, and find no problem with it. And the second thing is when you hear the Democrats saying, oh, this is Russian bots backing Republicans and conservatives. No, that's just further part of their deception and their plan. And I'm sure we'll find out in most of those cases a year or two down the later. Ha ha, cheeky us. That was actually us that did it. Oh, well, election over now. Ha ha ha. So remember that is all these social media companies also are banning all these conservative voices that you have. And it's not just like, it's not just happening in a vacuum. It's happening simultaneously across platforms. They're getting rid of right wing voice after right wing voice after right wing voice because of fake news and uh, other such things. Remember, the Democrats are just as bad. They're purposely doing the same thing. Let's see uh, if Facebook comes out and starts censoring. Let's hear the Democrats call uh, Zuckerberg on Capitol Hill and say, you need to start censoring Democratic fake news that our operatives are doing. Let's see if they say that, right? Uh, something tells me we'll be holding our breath for a long while. So yeah, just more hypocrisy. Just goes that it's all a sham, that it's all been this entire, oh, Russian Facebook trolls has all been a sham all along. They know it didn't have any effect because they know that when uh, people use a greater to like a 10 time degree, the same amount of money using the same tactics. When the Democrats do it, they say, ah, it's no big deal. So yeah, what hypocrisy. The New York Times, what a bastion of intellectual honesty they are. Great media, right? They're supposed to be the gold standard. How, how funny is this? More example that they're shady and they're just, they're not journalists. They're just a political mouthpiece. They're just pundits representing the intel agencies and the Democratic Party. So all right, everyone, I'll be doing a live stream uh, Friday at noon. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Recommend me to other people. And uh, all right, have a good one.